let's talk about new residents. Uh, this is a big, exciting, interesting, terrifying thing, uh, depending on how you look at it. Uh, but the new residents that are finding us here in the Berkshires and are making the Berkshires their home are an incredible opportunity and asset. And so we're going to talk a bit about the opportunities and impacts that they are having right now. So just going to jump through some numbers here. Um, so this is going back a little bit, right? Because January, October was, you know, last year now. Um, but just some interesting numbers that we found uh, that could speak a bit to what it actually looks like. You know, there's a lot of uh, kind of qualitative, like, oh, yeah, we're seeing a lot of people, right? Um, but here's some actual numbers. So uh, January to October of 2019 versus January to October of 2020, uh, residential sales were up 16%. Um, that is very significant. That's a double digit increase. It's not, you know, it, it's not just a, a little blip. It's actually that that's a, a magnitude. And that number has probably increased in further months as things have continued to shift and uh, the economics of people's lifestyles have also changed as well. Uh, so that's just one metric. One that I find even more interesting is land sales. So, you know, residential sales, you know, you're talking about selling a home or a condo or an apartment or whatever the case might be. Um, with land sales, we're talking about the expanse of land that we have here in the Berkshires. And in many cases, when folks are purchasing land, um, they are looking to actually uh, build on, right? They're looking at creating a more permanent presence here uh, in the region. And the interesting thing here is that land sales year over year on that same duration of time is up 79%. Um, so if we thought 16 was massive, land sales is even more massive. And this is, I should be clear that this is by number of purchases. So I didn't even do it by the, uh, the, the number of dollars because I feel like that's less important, but the actual number of sales. Um, so we are up 79% in that duration of time. Now, kind of skip ahead a little bit. This is just a single month. So, you know, while we were talking about 16% year over year from that January to October period, um, between March 2020 and March 2021, a single month, residential sales were up 26.1%. This was in an article recently in the Berkshire Eagle. So um, that is an immense number. And, you know, not to say that March is the, the biggest month for sales in general on the calendar year, but 26.1% change year over year is incredible. Uh, and that just speaks to some of the numbers. You know, there's, there's, you could probably get much more into it in individual communities and things along those lines in terms of what the actual impact is. But these are, these are now people that are here um, or, or that are here uh, uh, now a significant amount of time. Um, but when we start to talk about those who are here in a more of a permanent fashion, um, we're gonna talk about our population swing. So uh, US Postal Service did this study um, and you probably saw some of this information when it came out, it was kind of exciting to hear. Um, but between 2019 and 2020, there was a plus 3.9% swing in our actual uh, folks living here, right? So folks who, folks who changed their mailing address to the Berkshires. Um, and so, you know, prior to it, it was actually down a percent and change. And then plus, so 3.9 means it's actually around a 2.9% growth um, in terms of the number of folks that are now calling the Berkshires home and are getting their mail received here. Um, so those are just some numbers to give you a sense on what's this influx of residents actually look like. Um, so some just demographics and such that I, I think might be worth keeping in mind and keeping an awareness of yourself. Now, when it comes to your own community, I know the U.S. Postal Service did their study, but the mailbox measure is one that we actually had heard about prior to that data coming out. And that mailbox measure is how many houses that are normally second homes are you seeing mailboxes pop up on? Um, normally, that's a signal that they have changed their mailing address. So, um, you know, in, in several communities where there's a lot of second homeowners, we had heard this from them that they started to see the mailboxes going up. And that's actually, a, you know, a kind of an anecdotal measure of you can see how many people are now actually there. It's also a way of noting where is there a new resident that might be part of a new market for you to tap into. Um, you know, in terms of the, the demographics of these folks that we're seeing, a lot of them are now in this 22 to 55 age demographic range. And so if you think historically, um, this is a, an interesting shift. We are seeing an, uh, a decrease in the age of those who are uh, deciding to call the Berkshires home. 
Um, and we're also seeing a increase in the length of their work career ahead of them um, for folks that are coming here. It, it's not necessarily folks that are more leaning into the retirement age, it's actually folks that are still in their prime and still you know, working um, or looking to be working while they're here, whether they're working remote or they become an employee of a local business. So this is a, an interesting demographic swing that is continuing to evolve and will, you know, it, any data that I would throw up here would be outdated almost instantly, but um, that it's just an interesting trend that we're seeing in the, along those lines. And, you know, probably no surprise, but the, the, the huge chunk of these are coming out of New York City and Boston. We're also seeing a decent, uh, you know, group coming out of kind of the, the upstate New York um, area. Um, and then we have some, you know, kind of really random cohorts of folks that are coming here from folks like Illinois or Oregon, uh, New Jersey, uh, that are kind of traveling, you know, the, one person finds us here and then more come because they have similar uh, wants, needs and attractions to the Berkshires. So um, this is just some of that, you know, simple demographic data or demographic trends that we're seeing. Um, but what are the wants and needs that they have? So we, we have done um, some quantitative work on this. The results are not really prime time ready, um, but just to give you kind of a sense on what we're seeing here. Um, so many of these folks started as visitors. So they may have come once uh, or they may have come a couple of times in their past. They may have come here for summer camp when they were a kid or visited their grandparents or other family members. Um, but regardless of how they started coming here, now those are the folks that are starting to decide that this is the place that they want to uh, call home. Um, you know, we, we did a survey um, and, you know, a huge percentage of the folks that got surveyed, uh, and this is a, a based on a kind of looking for um, folks that were visitors slash looking at being residents of the Berkshires, um, you know, at, around half of respondents really did identify that they've come here more than once a year. Um, and so that, you know, if we're looking at the visitors as a potential resident pool, this is an important thing to note that normally our residents started as visitors are not just suddenly finding a job and saying, I'm coming to the Berkshires out of the blue. They, they have a history with us. Um, and so that is a valuable thing to maintain and uh, recognize when we're looking at the future. Um, those folks that are uh, looking at the Berkshires as a potential opportunity as for residents, uh, residency rather, um, they're really seeking outdoor recreation, natural beauty and arts and culture. These are three huge categories that they're looking for um, and three things that we have all over, right? So this is something that the Berkshires is rich with. Um, and so there's still a, an immense opportunity for growth uh, in terms of thinking about how we can attract more folks here. And things that they're really looking at favoring in terms of where they're going to be spending their dollars, quality food and drink, home and garden purchasing and opportunities. Um, again, you know, that, that hybrid visitor audience is, is also interested in that home and garden piece. Um, so these are some interesting areas that may have uh, further growth potential with our new residents that are coming in. So what does this mean? So the new year round market is now able to be the new regulars. Like these are the folks that, you know, you walk into the cafe and that person knows your, your coffee order or what you're going to buy before you even say anything, right? So the folks that are actually sustain your, your small business economies um, are these new residents or these new residents will be part of that. Um, they're not just kind of, you know, one and done or, you know, you see them once a year kinds of folks. They, they are actually becoming part of our, our actual communities. Uh, in a, and I say that in a, you know, with a multiple on it because I think that, um, you know, their, their local community, but also the regional community. The reinforced need for online and physical presence. Again, you know, if these are folks that are coming from major urban centers, um, there's still layers of discomfort when it comes to going to places in person. Um, but there's also, for some, a real want and need to be in person. Like they really want to get out and they want to go to the, your shops and they want to visit you where you are. Um, and so you need both of those platforms to actually be tapping into this new resident pool fully. Uh, new product demands, right? Again, talking about um, folks that are moving here. They, they likely are bringing a lot with them, but there's still going to be things that they realize that they need and that they want and they wish that they had. Um, and so keeping an eye on what those trends might be in uh, the, the needs of new residents, um, you know, in the, the trends in food, right? So things, you know, restaurants adding vegan options more readily to their menus. That's a big change in recent years. And a lot of that is driven by 
um, a change in mentality of folks that already lived here, but also, you know, these, these new markets and new residents that are coming in and looking for particular items. Uh, renewed ability to use targeted marketing, like I mentioned before um, in the previous session, really looking at how you can target locally. Um, and that is everything for this section.